Hi there, it's Vinonu. In this video, I'll be discussing how I secure a fully funded PhD position and uh, funding for my PhD in the UK. If you haven't had a chance to watch my previous videos, please take a moment to watch it. Um, it will definitely help you if you are looking for a PhD position abroad. And please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Okay, about my PhD. I discovered the PhD position, uh, the information about this PhD position uh, through the website called findaphd.com. And soon after I found this position in the website, I initiated contact with the professor by sending him an email along with my CV and cover email directly. He responded positively to my email, encouraging me to apply through the official university website, QMED University of London, that's where I'm working now. Consequently, I submitted my application via the university portal um, very soon, uh, including an you know, elaborative cover letter. Uh, and after a few weeks, I received an invitation for an interview, uh, which was conducted online by a panel of two interviewers. And I gave the interview. And exactly after one week following the interview, the supervisor sent me an unofficial email indicating that they had selected me for the position. And uh, also I will receive an official letter from the university very soon. This news was really um, happy news for me and I was really excited. However, um, there was a condition attached to the offer. I needed to submit the IL score um, uh, typically, for PhD courses in UK, uh, the score ranges from 6.5 to 7, um, yeah, overall the IELTS score. Realizing the urgency, I began preparing for the IELTS exam immediately after receiving the email. I was aware of my English language skills being less than perfect, and I had only two weeks to prepare. I relied on some YouTube channels and various websites for my preparation. And thankfully, I managed to secure an impressive overall score, like 7.5. I mean, that was my first attempt. I really surprised with the score. Um, I mean, I was really happy. Everything went very smoothly from there. And it is important to note that this position was fully funded for international students. I am sharing this information because in the UK, tuition fee varies from international students uh, to the UK nationals. International candidates often face substantially higher tuition fees, so it's crucial to ensure that any advertising funding opportunities are specifically aimed at international students. Uh, it is like four times higher for international students than UK nationals. Occasionally, university may admit uh, international students to PhD position uh, where funding is limited to domestic students. I mean, I met a girl uh, recently who got a position like that. In such cases, it becomes the responsibility of the student to secure additional funding to, to cover the remaining tuition fee. So I have to talk about the uh, tuition fee in UK. PhD program fee can vary um, widely depending on the university with an average range of 25,000 to 60,000 depending on the university. Uh, it, it, this is the annual fee. Personally, I chose not to apply for any position that require me to pay tuition out of uh, tuition fee out of on my pocket. I use the filtering position on the PhD, findaphd.com to narrow down my search to fully funded scholarship. Even though it meant a longer wait for, for the right opportunity. During that period, I received no response for 90% of the um, application I submitted. Out of 2,500 applications I sent to various positions in different countries, I only managed to reach the interview stage for five positions. Advisor I'll be working with is an outstanding scientist. I gave a thorough research before before to offer before to accept the offer. Um, I searched about his background and publication and everything, and that was one of the reasons. And furthermore, the first, uh, the chance of uh, collaborating with Oxford University, which my supervisor already mentioned during the interview, 
Uh, Oxford University was always like a dream come true moment for me. That was one of the significant factor for the decision making process. And now let us talk about the fees and the statement for PhD positions normally in UK. In my case, the fees for the university fees for my PhD program is around £27,000 per year and the duration is from three to four years. Regarding the stipend or the salary, it varies depending on the university. If you're in London, the stipend is typically around £20,000 per year. And if you're outside London, it is £17,000. And if you ask me, from my personal experience, I would recommend considering the position outside of London these days because of the cost of the living in London can be quite high. Mm, this has been my observation and many students find it more financially manageable to pursue their PhD studies in location outside of the capital. I have friends who are working in, uh, outside of London. And uh, I am fortunate that my scholarship covers my tuition fee and the fees in the Oxford University and now I got a chance to work in UCL so it covers the fees in UCL as well. So it's, uh, the collaboration is an excellent opportunity for me. And PhD students do have the option to work part-time, but it's essential to consider your workload and commitments related to your PhD research. Like any other students, PhD candidates are also allowed to work 20 hours every week in UK. Often PhD students are offered, not like any other jobs, like uh, uh, offered with the teaching assistant position in their universities. Such, uh, such as a position like um, the laboratory assistant, laboratory demonstrator, and uh, marking or something like that. So you can get those jobs. So these jobs are only entitled to get for the PhD students in the same university. So if you work in the university, you can teach there. So you can get extra money from that. So in my case, I teach at both the University of um, Cunard University and the University College London in UCL. But I work only for eight to 10 hours every week. And this is for only six months in a year. Then that's what I do. Going beyond 20 hours of teaching part-time workload could potentially negatively impact my PhD. That's what my thoughts. So I don't work more than 10 hours in a week. Ultimately, it comes down to how effectively you can manage your time. If you're very good at managing your time and if you're very efficient with your time, you can work more and you can earn more money, but I don't work for more than 10, 10 hours. So that is about the part-time jobs for PhD students. And this part-time job you can earn around if you're teaching, you can earn around if you're in London, it is around 17 pounds per hour. So, I mean, that's a good amount of money if you work for 20 hours, even if you work for um, 10 hours, that's a good amount of money. I mean, comparing to any other jobs, any other part-time jobs, uh, like in restaurants or any shops, they don't pay this much. In the universities, you can get paid uh, from, uh, that, that also depends on the universities uh, in which university you're working. Um, so that's an option for PhD student. Yeah, and if you have any questions about the PhD position, you can please comment below and I'll try to answer. Thank you, thank you very much.